Years ago, I wrote this book. It's called Flat Earth News because it's very obvious that the Earth is flat. Look, you can see it's flat. But then if you check, you discover that what everybody believes isn't true. Well, weapons of mass destruction all over Iraq. Uh, not quite true when we check. So it's about, it's about the, the book, so 10 years ago is about, uh, when well, it was arguing that mainstream news organizations are structurally likely to produce stories which contain falsehood, distortion, and propaganda. And it's to do with what I've just been talking about. They, they use press material, PR material, and they don't check. So what has happened in the 10 years since then, I would think it has got much worse. Because the thing that's driving that is the shortage of money in newsrooms. And when I was writing the book, the problem really was that our news organizations had been bought up by big corporations who were interested in making more profit. So they would reduce the number of staff in the newsroom and increase the output. But since then, this monster has come along, the internet, taking away our two main sources of income in a huge scale, the, the, the money from selling newspapers and the money from selling advertising. So that structural pressure is worse now than it was. It, it, there are differences, of course, between the UK and Ukraine. It sounds to me, from talking to people here, as though you are in an earlier phase. So up until around 1950, our newspapers belonged to, not, not to corporations wanting money, they belonged to propagandists, very rich men, always men, not women, usually with cigars, who owned these newspapers to make money, but also from time, to use them for propaganda. It was an explicit part. It was the same in America with Randolph Hearst. That generation in, in Western Europe and the US has tended to go, but I think you still have the oligarchs here owning newspapers for propaganda. So you may be in a different phase. But the answer to your question is, I think it's got much worse. There's another thing as well alongside it. If you're looking at the huge volume of falsehood which now flows around the world. In the history of the planet, there's never been anything like this before. It's, it's really frightening, the amount of falsehood. Mainstream news is a big source of falsehood. But alongside it, there's another thing, which is propaganda. So the propaganda activities of Western nations, Russia, of Israel, did you see Netanyahu pouring falsehood into the public domain about Iran and nuclear weapons about 10 days ago? Governments organizing falsehood is, is also a huge, like a, like a pump, pushing falsehood down all of our channels of communication. So you've got that, and you've got the mainstream media pushing out falsehood. And then you've got all the ordinary idiots on social media, all confirming each other's falsehood. The racists, the religious people, the ones who think the whole world is controlled by the Illuminati. At least, if you think of them as pumps, it's like... the. When the internet was created, sorry, I'm beginning to get into a bit of a rant here, but this is like a big thing facing humanity. The idea was the internet would allow everybody to communicate with everybody. Universal connectivity, they called it. It has now developed into an information sewer. All this falsehood flowing. And in there, if you can bear to get in amongst it, you find little bits of truth. But mostly falsehood. Very, very worrying. So we need to improve our act. We need to improve our skills and our ability to think clearly and our willingness to tell different stories and somehow or other we've got to get some money into our organizations. Thank you very much. A huge round of applause. Історія про те, як поширювалася, як Guardian публікувала певну інформацію, що робив уряд у відповідь на